Let's go to the Book Lovers Pizza on YouTube. Hey guys, long time no see. Welcome back to another video of the infamous The Book Lovers Pizza. As requested, I brought my sister back. Yay! Hi. Anyways, we see your comments in the comment se section and we do our best to fulfill those requests, like we have done here. Anyways, this video is going to consist of us sharing a bit of our, well, some of our favourite books that we've read this year. Hope you enjoy. Number one, The Book Thief. The Book Thief is one of the most unique books that I've ever read, due to most likely the fact that the book is written from the perspective of death. Now how many books can you say have done that? Anyways, the way that Mark Suzak has written the book is astonishing, because this book can take you to, through so many emotions in such a short period of time. The book is written for a slightly more mature audience, as it's situated and set in World War II, which exposes the reader to hard, harsher emotions such as cruelty and death. In the prequel to The Lord of the Rings, Bilbo Baggins starts off as a regular hobbit, living his normal life, but then he's introduced to Gandalf and the One Ring. This book is an incredibly important book that will, must be in your TBR, to be read, list, because of the explicit detail and the beautiful writing style that Tolkien has. My favourite thing about this book, apart from the amazing quest that Bilbo sets off on, is the amazing detail that Tolkien has put into The One of the Hobbits. Each chapter of the book is written in explicit detail, and while Tolkien's writing style will take some time to get used to, you'll learn to love it. This would definitely be a book that I would recommend, as it would boost your knowledge of the reading world, and is an important limestone in your reading career. This is definitely a 10 out of 10. Definitely. The Fault in Our Stars is a beautiful love-themed book. Hazel is just a girl with cancer, but then she meets this cute boy called Augustus, and her life is drastically changed. John Green constructs this beautiful and complex world with so many underlying emotions and focuses on the love life of Hazel. My favourite part of this book is probably how many faults that John Green has included into the characters, which makes them incredibly easy to connect to. While the audience of the book is situated to be pretty young, the hidden feelings and thoughts contained within the book can be quite extreme, which might up the reading level. The plot of the book is much more realistic than most of the books I read. Personally, I like the books that have a bit effect on the world and have a big plot, a big consequence. But this book takes it down a notch and is well more day-to-day -day scale. For these reasons, it's not exactly my type of book, but the underlying themes made up for it. So I'm going to give it a solid 7 out of 10. Now let's give it up for Isabella! and creates very fun creatures to read about. It really creates an image in your mind. If I could actually judge this book, I would probably give it a 10 out of 10. Because I really like how she uses like the mythical creatures and, well, explodes with imagination. The main character, Yumeko, goes with lots of her friends, goes to and visited lots and lots of lots of adventures and visited lots of magical places. It's really sweet how her friends will go to the ends of the world to help her try and restore the world back to what it was before. My second favourite book is a series called Summoner. Like the Shadow of the Fox, Summoner has many mythical creatures. In this series, an orphan finds a skull which then exposes him to the magical world. Then, that's when he starts training with these creatures called demons. He, on the way, oh. he meets lots of people who understand him. They're always getting into trouble, and lots, and lots, and lots, and, well, continue mischief. I'd rate this book maybe an eight and a half. I reward it with this mark 
because it's due to their level of engagement and it leaves out a lot of boring bits. Last but not least, The School of Good and Evil. It is a really good series. I read this book around the start of the year and I remember it like it was yesterday. Yesterday. So, so read that next time. So, so, to give you a little idea of what the book is about, so the main characters, Sophie and Agatha, go to the school of good and evil. Bum bum bum! Well, um, something terrible happens. But, as this is a no spoilers review, I cannot reveal what happened. So you better read the book. Well, back to the story. They get separated by this boy, Tedros. And boy. They come across lots of friendship challenges. I would read this book nine stars because out of ten. Because it spreads hearts like spreading butter. Anyways, thanks guys for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed this book review of our top six favourite books of 2020. I hope to see you on the next video and for now... Don't be afraid to put any comments of what books you like. So, like and subscribe! And I'll see you on the next one. Mommy. Uh -oh. <laughs>